couldn't believe it when Juliet went up to Jin and told him about the affair. She's like, guess what, your wife just had an affair. And it's like, I mean, I, I figure that how she knew that was because she had the, the information, you know, the folders with all the information about the person. And that's how she knew about the affair. Some people are saying she knew about it because some told her in DOC, but she didn't tell her that much. She just told her she thought the baby was someone else's, but it doesn't mean... I mean, I guess it does mean she had an affair, but it could have just been like a one-night stand or something. I mean, for all Juliet knows, it's just some had sex with another man, but she doesn't know that it was a full-blown affair, that she was going to see him regularly or something like that. So I figure if Juliet is saying that she had an affair, it's because she knew about it from the information that she had in the in everybody's life story or whatever. And so because of that, it made me think, you know, this information is none of her business to begin with, much less is it her place to be going around telling people about it, but... I mean, obviously, at the end of the episode, we find out that her intentions were, you know, to keep Sun from going to Locke's camp so that she wouldn't leave the island. But at this point, it's like, you know, after three days, she said it's been three days since Saeed and Desmond left. It's like, how much better could it be for her at the beat? I don't know. It feels almost like there's so many fewer characters than there were. It feels like all of a sudden now there's only like ten characters. When I think about the island and where everybody's at right now, you got like Jin and Sun on the beach, you got Juliet's there, you got Rose and Bernard, so what is that, six? And then you got over at Locke's camp, you got Locke and Claire and Sawyer and Hurley. So that's ten, and who else is there? I, mean, I guess there's a bunch of like red shirts and stuff. It just doesn't seem like there's as many people these days walking around out there. I, I don't know. I mean, I know Saeed and Desmond have left, yeah. And then there's, of course, Jack. Good old Jack boy, I tell you. It's just not the same without Paolo and Nikki, I tell you. No, I'm kidding. Um, oh. Yeah, there was some good stuff. It's funny when the tab, I'm just looking now, it's funny when the taxi drives away with a giant panda bear in the back. It's like, wouldn't this guy know that the taxi was, like, occupied by somebody else? Maybe he just thought that that somebody accidentally left it there, the person before, rather than somebody waiting on the taxi now. I mean, how rude can you get, man? What I was going to say earlier about them hyping up this episode, it's funny because they hyped up Eggtown a lot, too, as being, like, having some huge cliffhanger. And then people, a lot of people didn't really like the episode that much, and they were saying it was predictable, and they were saying this and that. But, but then what happened was, after that episode, they had the constant, and that episode was, like, huge, and everybody loved it, and it was, like, the ultimate episode. So it makes me wonder, if they're hyping this one up, is it a way of diverting attention so that people don't expect as much from the next one? Because I think that's part of why people like the constant, because they thought Eggtown was going to be so huge, and then it was kind of so-so, and then the constant comes along and blows everybody away. Which kind of makes you wonder if, there, if, this, if the same thing's not going to happen here. That I mean, I, I, don't, I don't get the impression that a lot of people were disappointed. A lot of people liked this episode, and I liked it too. But it makes me wonder what's, what's coming next now. Are they trying to keep people from getting too excited about episode 8 by hyping episode 7 the same way they did with the constant? I don't know. I hope so, because I'll tell you what, man, I cannot wait for next week. I freaking, oh, I'm so freaking excited to find out about Michael and the Walls and what the hell happened there. I'm just, I, I hope, I was, I'm, I'm like Josh, I hope that the episode starts with Michael and Walt leaving the way they did at the end of season 2. I hope it starts there and we find out what happened, where they went. I suppose you could construe this as a light spoiler. I'll tell you some, what I know didn't happen, but I won't tell you what I know happened. I know that when Michael and Walt take off on the boat, they don't run into the freighter. I know that because of something else. So what, what I, I know that at some point they landed somewhere. I don't know if they met up with the freighter and it took them to land, but at some point they are on land. I know that. That's all I'm going to say, but, you know, so people can stop asking, well, why don't the Freydies recognize Michael? Why, do, why don't they wonder, or why don't they know that he came from the island or something like that, you know? I'm just dying to see what's going on here. What I think is going on, and I've thought this for a while, is that Walt, that Walt that actually got on with Michael at the end of Season 2 isn't actually Walt. We haven't seen any, in the, well, we have, though. Okay, when Kate saw the horse, right, she walked up to it and petted it. So even though the horse might have been just an illusion or a manifestation or whatever you want to call it, she could still touch it. So when Michael and Walt hugged, I mean, people might say, well, that couldn't have been 
a manifestation because he actually touched him, but Kate touched the horse, so... And if her hand had just gone through it or something, I think they would have made a point of that, but... No. I don't think there's any other time that anybody's actually touched the manifestation, like Harper. Juliet didn't touch her, and they didn't touch Walt when he was appearing in the jungle site. Like Shannon didn't. And, uh, who else saw Jack and Christian? I don't think he touched Christian. But Kate did touch the horse, so... So I don't know how this manifestation thing would work, if it's, a, if, it's a, if it's some kind of clone. I mean, I know they said there's not going to be clones in this show, but it's going to be something close to it, the way it looks. I don't know. But, yeah, that's my theory. Walt is still on the island. He's been on the island the whole time. You know, Ben said that the file on Widmore was like his last bargaining chip. No, it's not. It's not his last bargaining chip. Walt is... And that's probably why Michael's back, because he got on a job with the freighter, sort of like this guy in the Find A-15 game. You know, he's looking for someone who's important to him, because he realized that... Now, what's going to be weird is when Walt disappears, if, if indeed that Walt is a manifestation, and he disappears all of a sudden, when Michael gets a certain distance from the island, he's going to be like, What the heck? Where'd you go? Or maybe Walt is, like, going to jump in the water like Regina just did to get rid of himself or to get rid of his other form and not look conspicuous by just disappearing. I mean, it makes you wonder, these other these other apparitions are... You know, I said the word apparition like three times in a row in that last... I, I, that's so embarrassing. It's like, oh, this is Harper's apparition! Oh, Ben is using Harper's apparition! And I'm just on and on. I use that word three times. It's like, Urgh. I just want to punch myself. That's so embarrassing. I can't even watch that video. I can't believe people are saying that's good. It's like, what the fuck, man? Anyway, but... But maybe that's what Regina was doing. Maybe she wasn't actually there, and she was trying to get rid of that form of herself in an inconspicuous way so she could go back and switch her consciousness back to her main body, which is somewhere else. But I, I don't know. But that's probably what Walt would have to do. Because when the other apparitions have disappeared, like the horse would just walk away, or Christian, he just walked off into the jungle. And any time any of these visions have appeared, they've always run off, like Walt's when he was going, shh, and then he just ran off before they had a chance to find out you know, because eventually the apparition or whatever it is has to disappear. And it can't allow the person to see them do it. So they have to run off somewhere like Christian and the horse and all of them. I, can, I, I know there was one other appearance of a ghost that I'm not thinking of. It was like Anna Lucia appeared to Echo, but that was just a dream. I'm surprised we haven't seen Echo appear to anybody. I hope we see Echo again. That would be awesome. Anyway, um, now I'm running out of time, so i got to go. <sighs> You can see I'm kind of redecorating here. Um, well, that's always been up there, but um, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn this off and uh, can't wait for Thursday. Oh God, I can't wait for Thursday. I don't have that night off this week, which kind of sucks. I got Tuesday and Wednesday this week. That's why I'm doing this today. I didn't have a chance to do it over the weekend because I was kind of participating in the 25-hour podcast. I was there for about six hours of it, but those two guys they did it straight through. They didn't sleep well. Jay took like a half hour nap at one point, I think, 20 minutes or something. But as far as I know, Jack made it through the entire thing. But still, that's just, that's truly commendable what they did. Gotta give them uber props for that. You can actually visit their website at www.jayandjack.com. And, uh, and you can also call them up at 206-309-0311. Call anytime. If you lost questions, comments, and or theories. I should have turned this off two minutes ago. Bye.